the Joe Rogan experience. Yeah. So anyway, I talked to David for four hours. Um, yeah, why did I bring that up? Because uh, David Fravor, you were talking. Yeah. Let's, let's explain who David Fravor was. Yeah, he's a uh, um, fighter jet pilot for the Navy, and uh, he discovered a UFO off the coast of San Diego that when they tracked it went from 60,000 feet to one feet in a second or less. They don't know how fast it went because it's, you know, the blip of a radar, but the thing traveled in, in an insane way that defies all of our understanding of propulsion, all of our understanding of physics. And this thing also actively was blocking their tracking systems, which is an act of war. If it, you know, if the Soviet Union or China was doing that, that's technically an act of war. So this thing was doing something that showed that it, it was intelligently aware of the fact that they are using tracking devices to try to lock in on it. And it behaved and moved in a way that defies all of our understandings of propulsion systems. It didn't give off any heat signature. And uh, the people from the Navy that he was communicating with saying, yeah, we see these every now and again. We don't know what the fuck they are. So the, the thing I was going to say, there's a lot of interesting things to say about this, but so just the, I just remembered that it felt like from that entire experience that because it didn't have a Chinese or a Russian flag on it, whatever he saw, is we tend to just the entire system is doesn't want to acknowledge it. Like, you, you just, you don't know what to do with it. So they actually, most of, uh, like, when you return back to the ship, and there's a bunch of pilots that uh, put, you know, that saw it. There's, there's a lot of people that witnessed it, and there's also the video. You know, the majority of the people didn't know what to do with it. They just went on with their day, like nothing happened. Uh, you know, they kind of made fun of each other or whatever mm -hmm. for, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, bro, you saw aliens. But, like, they didn't they didn't know how to comprehend it. That, that's what I meant, like, if we encounter life from elsewhere in the universe, we think we would be, uh, as a population, excited. But it feels like, just like with Book, Bigfoot, we want, we're excited by the mystery when they're, like, when they're just out of reach. Mm. But when they're, like, um, among us, <laughs> there, just, there's so many mysteries and incredible things among us that, we just kind of take them for granted. Yeah. And we, just, we don't even, um, or ignore them, actually, even worse. We ignore them. We get used to things. And that, that was the weird thing. The, the biggest mystery to me about uh, what David Favre saw, and a lot, of, and then also with the, the other videos in 2014, something like that, the Go Fast, mm -hmm. is like it wasn't a bigger deal than I thought it would be. Like, well, the big deal was when the Pentagon came out and said that they have recovered some vehicles that are not of this world. Now, they didn't expand on that. There hasn't been more conversation about that. But my – this is a purely speculation. My speculation is they are slowly spoon-feeding us information to allow people to be more comfortable with the inevitable arrival of something. And if they believe that something's coming, they don't want it to happen all at once. You see what happens just with, with the pandemic. You see what happens with uh, George Floyd. You see what happens with any anytime there's a big shock to our system and there's chaos in the streets. It's unmanageable. And if the UFOs came in the middle of something like that, like Jesus Christ, like who the fuck knows what would go down? If I was someone who's in a position of power, I would say, listen, this information's going to get out. It's inevitable. So why don't we let people know now? Just give them, just in words, say, we have recovered crafts that are not of this world. Say something crazy like that. Let Print it in the New York Times. Get it out there. And then slowly drip out more information. When they see these videos, they'll get more and more accustomed to it. And then eventually to be like masks. Like you walk down the street, everybody has a mask on. You don't even think about it. Yeah, but, okay. So let me... You know could, what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I totally... And this is such a fascinating question. If the government is in possession of an alien spacecraft, what is the right way to uh, release that information? The to real me, problem is if it, if it's more potent than any weapon that any that any civilization has currently on this planet. So if the United States is in control of this vehicle that is more potent and can do things that like if you really do have something that can go from sixty thousand feet to one foot in under a second that I mean that's that defies all of our understandings of speed right I mean that's so fast if you could do that well 
I, there's arguments against because it could be human created technology too that's just 15 20 30 years out like the stealth bomber was developed uh secretly so what defies it's our perception of its movement capabilities is right. what defies but there could be some tricks on perception that i mean that's the whole point with a stealth bomber is it's difficult to detect sure and so there could be same kind of tricks on perception that you could just be playing uh different kinds of uh, amazing secret human created technology that uh is able to deceive the human eye that's a good point i mean but the the thing about it is they tracked it it wasn't just that it was uh, the human eye that saw this and it's deceptive, but also like the stealth bomber, you know, the way it's designed, it, it, it blocks radar or it, uh, radar doesn't catch on to it. I but, think it is possible that some human created technology that's so far advanced from anything that we're currently, uh, that we, we currently understand, like in, in terms of like mainstream propulsion experts and and fighter pilots like david fravor and military people it is possible that some civilization one of the one of the big civilizations on this planet whether it's china or russia has come up with something that's uh, above and beyond what everybody knows but it's not likely but it's not likely that they've made that much of a leap and your sense on the other side if it's alien technology see i'm more optimistic to me, as a scientist and engineer, and actually David Favor says says this too, in this time of pandemic, in this time of like just, just hard negative news everywhere, there would be nothing more inspiring than the government in an inspiring like Neil deGrasse Tyson way, coming out and saying we have, not releasing the videos like they did, which is I don't know if you know, but they just put the videos on a website like there's not there's nothing it's just videos it's just like with like some boring documents that describe like nothing. They're not inspiring. We're not talking about like Neil deGrasse Tyson or like Carl Sagan Cosmos style, like a beautiful, inspiring. What is more inspiring than an alien spacecraft? Look, here's a, there's a fascinating mystery here. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more inspiring to us humans than th that there is life out there, intelligent life out there. But how would you handle it? Like, l let's imagine, let's imagine you are the leader of the United States. And you find out, or the you know whatever the head of the Navy military intelligence program, whatever whoever you are, you're a person that's in a position where you realize that this thing is from another world, and you have this responsibility to try to somehow or another publicize this. Yeah, like I, how, I would I would exact I would I would approach it a hundred percent from the perspective of science. Here's a mystery. So forget weapon. Like you, you mentioned, there's this inclination to think like, how can I figure out a way to use this as a weapon to d destroy Russia or China, as as opposed to seeing it like, like going to Mars, colonizing Mars, or going to the moon originally. There is some competitive element, but mostly it's a human pursuit of understanding, and human pursuit of overcoming our limited knowledge to sort of unlock mysteries of this universe from a physics perspective, from an engineering perspective, I would release all the information I have and uh, release it in a way that gets the Neil deGrasse Tyson folks in the loop. So it's, it's almost like an inspiring effort for us as a humanity to understand what the hell this thing is versus let's keep it secret and see if we can use it as a weapon. Well, I appreciate that you think that way because you're a scientist and you're thinking about it in a very positive way to try to expand our education and our understanding of this this thing and maybe we could you know use it for good but you got to realize that anything that surpasses any and all technologies that we currently enjoy in terms of fighter pilots and jets and military superiority if there's something that just is above and beyond all if everybody has a model t and you have a ferrari or better yet, you have a Tesla, you have a Model S, and everybody's got a Model T. You you are this is and you're in a race. Like you have something that is so far above and beyond what everybody else has. It's not really a fair race. It's a joke. You'll dominate if that if you are in a you have a Model T and the other person has a Tesla and you're racing and the winner gets to decide who has all the food, who gets all the women, who who lives in the nice house. Like you're gonna win every fucking time, right? Now, if you have a UFO, if you have a, a spaceship 
that comes from another planet where they're a million years more advanced than us. They've had a million years of evolution and technological evolution dealing with elements that are common on their planet that, that, that have to be created on a, a particle collider here and they only exist for a brief amount of time. If they have something like that that's powered by something that we can't even imagine and you figure out how to use that here on Earth, you'll have technical superiority, technological superiority over every other civilization, but, but every other country. In that technological superiority, it's so funny us chimps are like still talking about our village, we want our village yes. to be better than the next village. <laughs> when there's an alien civilization mm -hmm. that's a million years more advanced, right. that would can easily destroy us if it wanted to, right. and or actually understands the nature of existence in this universe on levels that are like we, we we chimps talk about like meditation and and finding inner peace. Like it understands on on such a deeper level like the nature of consciousness the nature of intelligence the meaning of life all that weird stuff that we're so obsessed with it mm. understands on another level and here we are thinking about what the russians are doing uh versus like understanding that mystery i think in the face of that mystery of something that's far more intelligent than us i think we can't it's a ridiculous notion to think we're anything but uh, one human village and in terms of weapons because you said like get all the girls or whatever the, I think the weapons thing is the key thing mm -hmm. and we 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 already at least the major nations have all the weapons we need to destroy each other it's like we don't need extra weapons I well I mean it feels like it feels like uh, you, you, your hypothesis would be like if an alien technology was here and we'd figure it out, we'd be able to have something that um, destroys other chimp villages an order of magnitude more efficiently than u nuclear weapons, thereby having an asymmetrical, sort of from a game theory perspective, uh, power over other nations. And we can tell China what to do. We can tell Russia what to do. That's that's the perspective from which they're thinking. I just, I I'm just, not even saying that they're thinking that way. I'm thinking uh, a human would think that if they had control of this vehicle. I'm not saying that the aliens would think this way. I'm thinking also that we are constantly innovating. When when you when you talk to uh, people that are designing jets and planes and fighter pilots and they're, they're talking about new systems that they've created and new you know new new weapons, they don't just sit back and say we have enough weapons to destroy russia and china and the rest of the world combined so we're just going to stop they, this is not how human beings innovate human beings are in this constant state of wanting the newest greatest innovations we want to improve upon every single existing invention until we hit some sort of singularity point or whatever the fuck we're striving for as a culture and that would be that propulsion system, if, they, you, if you do really have something that can go from 60,000 feet to one feet in less than a second, you're dealing with something that we don't understand. We, we, we can't do that right now. And if, we, and if you could figure out how to do that and propel people that quickly, it would be a game changer. Now, how much of a game changer, what does that mean? Well, we're in this weird place where we kind of agree to not use our best weapons, right? Like when there's a, there's a face-off between the United States jets and a Russian jet, and they, they come close to each other, like over China or something like that. It's weird, because we're not shooting at each other, but we're real close, and even the missiles that we have, they're not nuclear. Like, we're, we, but we're involved in, in a skirmish with another country, but it does, we don't use all our weapons. Like, if we approached war the way people approached war in you know the, the Middle Ages, we would just nuke the fuck out of everybody that talks shit, right? Yeah. Anybody, anybody, what, what did China just say? What did they just say? Fucking launch those yeah. missiles. Fuck those people. Instead of Twitter, right. it'd be nukes. Yeah. Exactly. So we're already in this place where we don't use our best stuff. We're already, so if we had something that made us fly better and fly faster, the real question is, yeah, how much would that change the world? I don't know. I don't know how much it would if we got in control of some UFO and we we're able to get to China quicker. With, how much of a difference would that make in terms of like the way they responded to our military? We're in this 
position now where there's multiple countries ha- that have the ability to destroy other countries. There's a, a, Iran has some sort of a nuclear program. Pakistan has a nuclear program. Uh, India has a nuclear program. You know, of course, the United States, Russia, China. There's many countries that have the ability to fucking wipe out huge numbers of the population like that. Just launch just one crazy psychotic leader who just decides to just listen. We're going to fucking make our mark here. Everybody together on one, two, three, go. Boom. (laughs) Episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience are now free on Spotify. That's right. They're free. From September 1st to December 1st, they're going to be available everywhere. But after December 1st, they will only be available on Spotify, but they will be free. That includes the video. The video will also be there. It'll also be free. That's all we're asking. Just go download Spotify. Much love. Bye-bye.